Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back. This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. We're continuing our interviews here today for the Oracle Groundbreakers India Yatra, which is a massive three-week conference that's wrapping up in the next couple of days. It's been going on for three weeks and it's on cloud technologies and database technologies and Java and a bunch of other stuff, open source as well. Um, and for right now, I'm here talking with one of the speakers, Phil Wilkins from the UK. Phil, welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Pleasure it's, to be here. It's good to see you. It's good to meet you. Um, I'm specifically reaching out to speakers that I've never met before or that I've never interviewed before. And uh, so I'm glad you responded and um, really interested to hear what you have to say. Um, so before we get started, I have just, you know, like I always do, basically ask people just to give me a quick summary of um, who you are, where you are, what you do, those kinds of things, and then we can jump in. Yes, so I'm uh, here in the UK, as you say, and uh, uh, I work for Capgemini UK as uh, uh, you know, a global SI, uh, and I am the UK's tech evangelist. Uh, so uh, being an Oracle Ace director kind of fits rather nicely into that. Um, and I lead a lot of the uh, sort of forward thinking and, and tech best practices for us. Um, as a ACE director, I get involved in, in uh, a lot of community stuff, particularly through the UK user group um, and contributing to organizing the conferences here in the UK um, or online conferences. And I also participate in managing a developer meetup, which has gone virtual as well, given all the challenges with COVID. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Um, I see you're outside and actually I'm, Actually, I'm inside. I wish I were outside right now, but it's raining here. Um, and if you know, it'd be nice to do these outside actually, because I'm right next to the mountains here on this side. Um, but I don't know if I can get good net connection up there. So, um, okay, so you're doing a couple of talks at this conference, um, Groundbreakers Yatra. And uh, the first one I see here on the list is what makes a good API? Uh, so, let's talk about that. What's that about? So uh, the, the core of the message uh, is really about sitting back and thinking about uh, actually what is it we're trying to achieve with APIs. Uh, we get very caught up quickly with the technologies, whether that's um, uh, REST or SOAP or WISD or, and so on. But actually the important thing about an API is, is the ability to enable people to consume it. So uh, it's about trying to draw people's attention to the fact we need to step back. Don't worry about the technology for a moment. Think about what it is you're trying to d communicate, what data you're trying to share, uh, how you want to share it, how uh, going to consume it, uh, the, the nature of the data. So you know, we're, we're in a world where uh, data security uh, and um, sensitivity is ever growing. So we've got uh, personal protection and data legislation. So how does that affect how you handle it? How do you protect your systems from uh, being swamped by demand? Uh, all those questions need to be really answered in, in a good API, even in an internal API. Um, in the world of cloud, we're into a zero trust sort of methodology. So how do you apply that sensibly within an organization? Interesting. Is this, is this a common practice in terms of designing these? Um, or are these, you know, things that you've learned over the year, sort of, sort of, you know, best practices? It's a combination of things. Uh, some of it is through uh, ongoing research and keeping track of uh, some of the leading thinkers, um, but a, a lot of it is accumulated experience, particularly around the practicalities of the, the design and definition of data and things like uh, API versioning, uh, where it's very easy just to think about the here and now, but what happens in a year's time when you want to make a change. Uh, we've um, had a lot of experience working with big customers uh, 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 and helping them on their API journey and developing that. Uh, and of course, it's always reassuring to them if it's a, not just a film message, but actually look here, it's backed up and proven as good practice by other players as well. 
uh, so people feel a lot more assured that they're not being taken down a, 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 a bespoke uh, route, if you like. Okay, cool. Is this talk primarily for developers or is it suitable for DBAs as well? It's suitable to DBAs and to developers. Um, in today's world, we can do APIs, particularly REST APIs, almost with any technology. Uh, Oracle has all uh, ORDs in the database. And then uh, we go to the other end of the spectrum and you can talk about the uh, OCI API gateway and what that offers. Um, whilst I'm not focusing on those particular products, it's worth thinking about, uh, you know, how do I leverage these to achieve the goals that we should be thinking about, like, like the security, like uh, th rate limiting, which protects your back end from being swamped. Uh, whilst we talk about cloud elasticity, it still takes seconds to spin up new uh, instances of uh, uh, machines or containers. Um, obviously, the database cloud service, whilst it scales beautifully, it is not an instantaneous reaction to load. Uh, so what do you do to manage the demands so that you can react and continue to give a quality of service? Interesting. Okay, so it's good that it's for both. Because um, I'm finding more and more of these talks really are suitable for DBAs and developers because these people are working in teams and a lot of these functions actually blend to one degree or another. And um, so that's good to hear. The second talk you did um, was actually also also API related. What was that about? So you said uh, GOPC and REST APIs? So that's a little bit more developer centric. Um, uh, we've seen over the last five, ten years, uh, REST become the predominant technology, but we've seen a couple of other technologies come up, uh, uh, GRPC being, being one, or Google RPC, um, as it stands for, uh, and uh, GraphQL. So the question becomes, okay, what's the right answer for me now? Which technology should I choose? Because not every technology is suitable for every use case. So we step back, we look at actually what are the differences and, and the pros and cons of each of the different ones, and then uh, uh, provide some insights in, into um, what we would recommend as an adoption set up. You know, when, when, when's GraphQL better? Uh, what are the, the risks that you've got to avoid uh, GraphQL because you can design it to be uh, um, a lot broader and offer uh, uh, data entities and operations on data entities. Uh, it becomes very easy to uh, map that straight to your database. That, that comes with risks. Uh, you know, you change your database, you risk uh, impacting your GraphQL, which means you impact your consumer. Um, and that's where we want to avoid. So it talks about tomorrow we'll be talking about some of those things and the considerations behind it. Uh, all of these technologies are, are available on, on the Oracle stack, uh, whether it's through uh, uh, IaaS, um, or through uh, some of the uh, PaaS offerings. Cool. Okay, so that's tomorrow, right? Yes, that's tomorrow. And the what makes good API? Did you already do that one? Because we're no, at the end the of soft, that's the afternoon. So oh, in a couple okay, of this hours. afternoon. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Because I was going to ask you how did it go. So okay, <laughs> to come. Um, Okay, cool. Very good. Um, have you presented? Have you so have you interacted, presented to the Indian community ever before? This is the first time for me. Um, uh, being UK based, uh, I do a lot of presenting around Europe. I do a little bit in the US, uh, particularly when uh, Open World presents an opportunity. Um, having just become an ACE director this last year, um, the opportunities to travel a little bit more uh, have opened up. But um, at the end of the day, I've got to be mindful of the fact that uh, I work for a consultancy and uh, our bread and butter is talking to customers. Right. I'm working with customers. So uh, I have to balance my travel commitments for presenting with, uh, with practical day-to-day -day demand. Right, exactly. I, I, 
I've been pretty involved with the Indian community, and so uh, they're a very smart bunch, and they're very interactive as well. So um, hopefully you'll have a you know, good turnout and, and uh, some good conversations with these uh, talks. You mentioned uh, Oracle Ace Director, so that's something recent that you became? Yes, so uh, I was uh, um, uh, nominated last year by uh, 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 another ACE director, Simon Haslam, and, and, and uh, that was acknowledged at uh, the UK AUG conference in December last year. So uh, that was uh, um, you know, lovely to see the, to receive the recognition of the contributions I've been making into the community. Uh, and obviously it opens up some doors because uh, we get the support uh, and engagement and encouragement from Oracle to uh, try and reach further afield, if you like. So uh, um, one of the benefits of everything becoming a bit more virtualized at the moment is, we, is the participation in Yatra and um, being online to actually participate in uh, the uh, Latin America uh, conference later in the year. Right, right, and there's the. There's actually going to be an Asian, an Asian tour as well. Um, I'm sure there'll be a European tour, actually, at the end of the year. Many of these groundbreaker tours, um, but the current situation, I think, solves your travel problem that you mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, it certainly <laughs> does. Uh, it makes it very interesting because you get to meet, meet and talk to people that you perhaps wouldn't get the chance to talk to. Um, uh, the the meetups that we've been running, we've taken those virtual and, uh, and uh, collaborating with other other Oracle meetups uh, more around Europe. But uh, the collaboration has been phenomenal, and the diversity of uh, people that seems to be being drawn in is, is uh, fascinating. So uh, uh, it's it, it's created some interesting opportunities. Although you know, meeting people physically creates opportunities for conversations that you wouldn't have right otherwise uh, the virtual uh, does mean that we've been able to reach out and experience conversations with other communities yeah I, I i definitely have you know experienced you know some some divergent you know actually i have actually i have some some divergent you know feelings about this i mean i've met a lot of new people like this you know uh, which is great but I mean, I'm I'm sitting here in the kitchen, you know. So <laughs> it's just that there's it, it's good, you know, because you can you can actually actually get to many many more people. But there's a certain shield there. It's flat, you know. I mean, it's a screen. Um, but you know, it, it is what we have to deal with at this point. Um, so you also mentioned. Um, that you've been involved, and I actually read here in your bio, you've done some your book reviews and, and and things like that, and you're writing books as well, right? That's right. Yes. So uh, I got involved with uh, Pact Publishing 15 years ago, uh, and uh, um, I've been uh, helping out as a, as a book reviewer, as a you know as a peer reviewer before the book's published. I've been very fortunate to. Um, uh, review some some great authors, uh, David uh, Huffinger, for example, who's uh, highly respected in the Java community. Um, so it's great. It's a, it's a learning opportunity. It's a great thing to also be able to be able to feed back and ask questions of the author or, or offer suggestions. Um, but um, that developed into uh, writing myself uh, about must have been about five years ago now or nearly five years ago when uh, ICS came out uh, I worked co-authored a book on uh, ICS which is now part of OIC the integration cloud and um, then a couple of years ago I got to work um, with Lewis Weir who's well known in the API space uh, as an ACE director uh, in fact, he, the reason I work at Capgemini is, is uh, Lewis was working there and um, uh, persuaded me to join him. Uh, so we had a bit of a, a European uh, powerhouse of uh, developing API knowledge and expertise. And we co-wrote about API cloud service, uh, which is now sort of being combined into the uh, cloud native gateway as well. Um, 
And then this last year, uh, I have uh, bitten the bullet and gone solo. And um, I'm writing about something called Fluent D, which is about logging uh, and, uh, and log management. Uh, one of those less sexy areas of IT, but very important uh, and becoming more so as we've become more and more distributed, more and more dynamic in our scaling. Um, so I'm working on that at the moment. So I've never heard about that. What is that? Just speak a little bit more about that. What is that involved? So um, there is uh, there are quite a few products out on the market, uh, and including open source solutions. Uh, the one I'm concentrating on is called Fluent D, um, and I, I'm working with Fluent D. It's a, a highly extensible framework. Um, but it's uh, graduated from the CNCF community in the same way as uh, Kubernetes has. Okay. And it's um, uh, one of the default options within Kubernetes logging. Uh, so capturing logs to a central location to be able to do uh, log analysis across all of your containers is, is been the driving force behind FluentD's growth. Um, uh, and as it happens, um, Oracle are developing a uh, logging uh, product for uh, Oracle Cloud. Um, and uh, that's due out, I believe, later this year. And that actually leverages FluentD as well. So uh, there's a quite an interesting synergy potentially there. Uh, but FluentD itself is open source as a solution uh, and highly flexible, but it also works um, like APIs in many respects, it is not tied to cloud. Uh, we tend to associate it with cloud-based technologies, but uh, uh, logging is just as important whether you're in a classic uh, uh, um, client server set up with you know, one app server and a database, uh, or even just working within the database using a, a, an ORDS Apex-based solution. Uh, you want to get your log information out. You want to get it to the right places. Um, and in large organizations, you often have different teams doing different things. You've got the DevOps team wanting to understand how an application works. So how do you get the logs to them? Um, but at the same time, you'll have a security team that got dedicated tooling. So they want to see the logs, particularly the logs about what's happening here in terms of user actions or, or uh, the volume of events. So if someone's trying to probe uh, your firewall, uh, then people want to bring those logs together to see what's going on holistically. Uh, and that's what FluentD is all about, is this ability to gather the logs from diverse sources, bring it together so that you can do this analysis and look at your uh, environment holistically, whether you're a DevOps person or a security person. Um, but allow them to use their preferred tool for the analysis side of things. So that could be Oracle's log analytics engine or Splunk or both, for example. Interesting. Never heard of it. Okay. Well, I learned something. Absolutely every interview I learned something new. Um, I have a lot to learn, believe me. Um, oh, it's, so, a, it's a lifelong journey of learning when you're in IT. Yeah. Uh, so you're writing about this. How, how long would you take to write a book on this? Uh, a book, it seems to be, you know, from the three that I've been involved with now, writing seems to take about nine months. Um, you, the, the first, uh, you, you go sort of uh, ebbs and flows. Um, it can take quite a while to get going once you get in all the agreements and working out what the the contents of the book are going to be. And then you'll go through a, a, quite a surge of getting through chapters, getting them written uh, for the first draft. Uh, and then you slow down a bit as you go through the review cycles to, to uh, edit and manipulate and, and refine the book uh, and make sure that you're hitting home with your messages. Um, and then there's a big push at the end to get it out because there's always those last little details that need to be addressed. Uh, and there's a big push because we've set the date to say, right, we're going to the printers on this date. Uh, we, you need to get on and finalize those last little corrections. Right. So. 
Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, Phil, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm really glad that we had this chance to talk, and uh, I'm glad that you're presenting to the Yatra here uh, for the first time. I'm sure the community will actually will get a lot out of what you have to say. Um, and yeah, good luck on your talks, and uh, hopefully... Thank you. Um, you know, next year, the year after, maybe the year after that, hopefully sometime in the future, we'll hook we'll up with some. Yeah. <laughs> actually get to meet live, yeah. Yeah. So, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Lovely. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Speak to you soon, hopefully. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.